Hi there. Welcome to this course on creating DevOps pipeline with AWS. My name is Ranjal and I'm your instructor for this class. In this course, you are going to learn about different developer tool services which are offered by AWS. Firstly, you will learn how to create code commit repository to store application source code and manage the version control system. Then, with the help of your commands, you will learn how to push application source code into code commit repository. After it, you will learn how to implement AWS code build service for compiling our source code and doing functional and unit testing. Then you will learn how to create build spec YAML file which contains the build commands to configure our building system. With the help of code build, you will learn how to generate the reports for your testing and also you will learn how to extract the logs from your building system. After understanding the fundamental stage of DevOps pipeline, we will jump into AWS code pipeline, where we will going to deploy pipeline from source to the production ready application. Meanwhile, we will going to extract the source code from the code commit, then we will going to do testing using code build and then we're going to deploy our application on Elastic Beanstalk. So whenever we're going to do some changes on code commit repository, it will going to trigger an event through which our pipeline will be updated. After it, we will create AWS Code Star project with the help of CloudFormation stack. Here, you can manage the code commit repository, code build project, code deploy, and as well as code pipeline. Here, you will have option to manage each of the service using one interface on CodeStar. And here, you can also add some team member here and you can also monitor every services and you will got lots of options here in this CodeStar project. So this is all about different developer services which you will going to learn in this course. I'm super excited to have you on board. So see you in the class. Hey friend, welcome back. Here in this lesson, we're going to talk all about AWS Cloud9. This AWS Cloud9 is a cloud-based IDE, a uh, kind of integrated development environment where you can write your code, you can run your code, as well as you can debug your code within your browser. That's the cool part of this Cloud9, the coolest thing into this AWS world where it includes the code editor, your debugger, your terminals, all of the things into one place and that is AWS Cloud9. This comes with pre-packed with essential tools where you can run your popular programming languages like JavaScript, Python, PHP or any such other languages. And the best part is here you don't require to install all the files and packages. You simply configure your de deployment machine to start your new, new project. So since it is a cloud9 uh, cloud-based IDE, so here you can run your project, your run your application from anywhere, either in your office, your home, or anywhere, just you need to have an internet connection. That's the cool thing. And the best thing which I recommend for using this cloud9 is this enables you to do the pair programming, which means like you have a team of four to five members which are located different parts now you can do the coding do the coding stuffs all the programming stuffs all the things together online isn't it so it is very very good service which i recommend to use and let's do it let's create something with this cloud nine so first of all you need to create the environment for your cloud 9 just give any name for your environment put some descriptions if you want to and then next step and here you need to do some environment settings like environment type instance type the platform which you want to add like amazon linux amazon linux ami the ubuntu server you can also set the activity thing like it will going to save your cost or also you can do some Network settings as well. I'm just going to keep all the settings default one and just going to create the environment. So it will take a time 
for a while and it will going to set up all of the stuffs there and once all the setups has been done we will be able to create a file and we're going to run that file and even we're going to test that file in through the browser okay here you will get some options like preview where you can preview your work okay so our environment is now ready and somehow our terminal is also is yeah now all the things has been set up here now i'm going to create a new file a new python file where i'm going to print this hello world to check that is working fine or not okay so here you will get option like new file name it that file hello.py and open that particular file that empty file you simply write print and inside it that just write hello world the world okay now i'm going to these are some of the options it just look like a simple id like idea beans like things okay so here you can have the option run with python 3 so it will going to run your application your python script and displays the message which we put down there hello world okay in the next part we're going to do some more things so for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i've shown you that how you can simply run your python application a simple hello world program now in this part we're going to create a simple flask application again it will be hello world program okay this is very uh, popular program which everyone used to have so this is our main.py where we have simple flask application and now i'm going to run this flask application as i said earlier that all the things are already installed with this cloud9 once we did some setups so it easily run our program and uh, here you can see that once we have previewed our flask application you are getting some http request okay so this is how you can easily preview your application whether it is simply your simple python file or even a flask application which is used for web development so as you can see that you need to give the port as 0 uh, 80 80 and the ip the host ip will be 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 okay so this is some of the things which you need to put okay now there is an option you can open this particular preview in the newly tab and the, the ba 5 e and so on things till vfs is the id for our ec2 instance okay which i'm going to show you later on and that's all in this way you can simply run your flask application and once your flask server is off your application is also not in the running mode so let me show you some more other things like let me show you you can even clone your github repository there and uh, run that particular application so this is my repository aws flask app and here i'm going to copy that http url and as i said earlier it is also come with this cloud 9 already installed you don't need to set up this again so i have cloned my that github repository up there and we have that file we have our requirement.txt so let me open to this directory and pip install hyphen r and the name of our requirement.txt in case if we left with any package which doesn't come with this cloud9 it will be also going to install into our environment where we can perform our things and run our applications so let me run with python 3 and uh, we got no error and it's working fine so now i'm going to preview my application into the new tab okay so this is our web application which i have created with the help of flask and we have added some database functionality into it and we are using here mysql here mysql database the sql alchemy package okay here you can add some to do list to do task there 
and even update that you the current status of your task and so on things then it is also very basic app which is particularly used to to demonstrate how you can integrate your database functionality with the simple flask application okay so in this way you can add some task here task one task two and you can update this task even you can delete from here and so on things here you can in the home page you can get all the tasks name here okay so this is how you can simply clone your github repository there to run this application and that's all this is how you can work with cloud9 hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i've shown you there how you can clone your github repository here and then you deploy that particular flask application now in this part i'm going to take a look of our cloud9 environment and see different options which are available up there okay so here as you can see there are some options like environment is there then source control then aws is there and support you will get option related to support on windows you will get some options related to navigations and tabs presidents and so on things in the tool section you will get some more different options in the run you will can set up your configuration select your language in the view option you can set that what you want to have on your dashboard and here you can also change the layout of your dashboard your ide actually then you can also change the the look the theme of your cloud 9 ide as well then you can set change the front size syntax and so on things you can do here there are lots and lot informations are there you can choose any of your theme here and according to you like some some people loves dark color and some people loves bright colors and so on things but most of the people i think they prefer the dark things okay so you can also choose for it and uh, then there is some options like in edit you will get you can like do some cut paste and so on things there and the file you can create a new file creating new file using template which means that it will going to create a html file having all the important tags into it okay so these are like you can save your file you can open some recent things you upload the local files these are will be options that are available inside the file section and here and what i'm going to do right now i'm going to delete all of the content which is right there on my ide okay so so that i can delete my this environment cloud9 environment as it is not compulsory to delete all of the things you can simply delete the environment as well it will going to wipe out all the things but it's better to remove all of the things which is there here okay so we don't have anything inside this environment inside this id right now now what i'm going to do i'm going to show you one more thing before deleting my environment which is ec2 as this cloud9 is taking support of this ec2 you can see here and the instance name you can see this ba58c which is actually the name for this which is the id for this by ec2 you can see in the url you will find that thing so this is my ec2 where my environment is set up and all the packages all the languages are installed here and that's why we are easily running our application deploying our application doing so on and so on things so if i'm going to delete this cloud 9 environment so what will going to happen it will going to first terminate this ec2 and then all the things will be removed okay so i have again opened my this cloud 9 dashboard here you can have some options like edit where you can change the name of your environment adding some tags there inside view details you can have some basic details which you have filled while creation of the environment now 
what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove all of the stuffs which are there. Okay, so this is my cloud nine development environment. Okay, now as you can see, now no more application is working, and here you will get some option. This delete one, just tap this delete, and you need to just write this delete in the caps lock and delete okay now it will going to delete all the setups which it did into ec2 and then it will going to terminate this ec2 as well okay now as you can see here this is my instance and i'm going to refresh it you can see the instance state is now shutting down and after a few times later it will be converted into the terminating state which will eventually delete it after a while okay so it will delete all the things okay so this is all about cloud 9 ide where you can run test and debug your codes and it supports various programming languages and uh, it is very easy you can easily integrate your cloud 9 setup with cl uh, code pipeline code commit and various other things okay so this is one place where you can do lots of lot of things without doing at mu that much of configurations okay so this is the cool thing of uh, cloud 9 and that's why its name is also cloud 9 okay so it will take time while deleting the environment and then making your ec2 instance to the terminate state so this is all about cloud 9 i hope you understand how you can use this cloud 9 to run and deploy your applications and that's all keep learning and keep exploring hello friends welcome back in this lesson we will set up the virtual environment and install libraries and the packages which are required for this project you can write the code at almost any id and text editors like notepad notepress plus plus but i would suggest using id like pycharm which i'm using right now will make your development process much easier and much faster so before starting anything the first thing which i will do is to set up the virtual environment and the need of creating this virtual environment is to isolate all of your packages and libraries which we will going to use here to the rest of the libraries and dependencies which are already installed on your system and it will be very helpful for you at the time because we will and project to project we need another versions of the libraries and packages and using this virtual environment will create the isolated environment for us okay in this way you can create the virtual environment the project virtual environment which has just created and here you can find the new directories created and inside this directory inside that script directory you will get that activate and we're going to use this activate bat file to initialize our virtual environment so simply write go to that place and execute this command and it will you will go inside uh, your newly created virtual environment you can find it like in the where you're going to write the commands you will find that it is written inside the double brackets project so it means that you are inside the virtual environment now i'm going to install the flask web framework of the python which we will require here because we are dealing with the web development app and for it we will require the flask the most popular web framework of the python and also we will going to add some more libraries and the packages but the best way is to create the requirement file and mention all the libraries and packages there because writing again and again pip install sqlalchemy pip install any other kind of libraries and packages it will be very repetitive so rather than doing this repetitive job it's better to create a requirement file add all your packages libraries and run it with a single command which is pip install hyphen r and the name of your requirement file so this is how you can install all the libraries package into your virtual environment now to check the libraries are installed or not just use this command pip space freeze and you will get the list of the libraries and packages which are currently there inside your virtual environment hello friend welcome back now we have set up the programming environment 
let's create our first web application using Flask. Flask is a web framework of the Python. First and foremost, we will going to import the Flask object using Flask package. For it, just simply write import Flask from Flask import Flask. Okay. Now we will going to create the Flask application instance. Let's call it as a app here, and inside it, we're going to pass a special kind of variable called name. Then we will going to use app dot route, which is a kind of decorator which will going to turn your regular Python function into a Flask view function. It simply means it will going to convert the functions return value into the HTTP response, which is going to be displayed by the HTTP client like web browser. Here we will going to show inside the Chrome web browser. Okay. Now here I'm going to define a regular Python function home and it will going to return the simple string just simply write return and just write hi everyone here so what will going to happen that this function when it will be executed it will going to return this string and as it is used under the decorator it will be take it as a http response and this value will be going to display on the web page now let's execute our first flask application so simply write at last app.run and also reformat the file as well now it is looking pretty well the well oriented python code so now i'm going to run this application for the first time and this application will run inside our local host with a port 5000 so this is the string which we passed inside our function home and it displays as a http response okay you know that web application comprises of lots of html files css files and so on things and this flux application doesn't have any kind of html pages now i'm going to add the html pages into our flux application for it you need to first of all you need to create the template directory there and inside that template directory we're going to add the html pages there and why we use this template is just because so that we can use the jinja template engine and it will going to take the html file from this template directory okay the by default location now as i'm using the ide so this is one of the benefit which you will get it created the html page with all basic syntax tags so on things now i'm going to write a simple um, header tag there and put down that string there so we can identify that the page we are displaying is the html pages now i'm going to create another decorator so that it will going to target this html web page so here you can give a name any of them first of all i will simply use a simple slash which when we run the applications it open by default now i'm going to add this slash base so what will going to happen when we're going to run this application it will be the url will be the local host slash this base url okay now here we're going to use this render template so that we can use the jinja template engine so i need to import the another package here just write render template or you can simply just right click and it will going to import the render template automatically so this is the changes which i made inside my our flask application i think there's some error is there okay yeah you can't use the same name of the function which is home let me give an one at the suffix now i'm going to run this application again it will be running inside our local host the default page will be the hi everyone now after it the slash has put the base there and it will going to print the hi everyone this is another html page which was our newly created html page so this is how you can add the html page into your flask application using that render template hope you understand that how you can create a simple 
Flask application and how you can add the HTML pages into it. Hello friend, welcome back. Now we'll set up a database for our Flask application. Before it, we will just going to add some more libraries into our Flask application. Request and redirect are the perfect combination for redirection, HTTP redirection, and URL for is simply used to create a dynamic URL in Flask. Now I will going to configure the database here in this lesson and it might be a little bit complicated if you have never done it before but don't worry that's fine you will understand everything at the end of the lesson here we're going to use the sql alchemy to create our database this is a lightweight database now here we need to configure the sql alchemy and the first thing which we need to do here is to add the database now make sure all of them which you are going to write inside this bracket it must be in uppercase and this will going to create the database connection sqlite underscore database underscore uri so it must be in uppercase and here you need to pass this thing to create your database connection here you can name give an any name for your database here i simply just written down db.sqlite this is the name of my database here okay now this is now i'm going to disable this track modification of sql alchemy which is the kind of event system to monitor the every sessions in sql alchemy so to avoid the overlaying, i'm just letting it to mark as a false here just right here the false now this is uh, two lines of configuration which are required in every SQL Alchemy app. Now we're going to create an instance for our DB. To do this, just simply write DB equal to SQL Alchemy inside the record. You need to give uh, the Flask app instance, which is app here. Okay. Now we're going to create our base class, and this base class it a kind of a model for your table so here we will going to give the name of table a to do table and it will having a two three columns one is id title and the complete so this id will be act as a primary query here and the data type which i'm going to use here will be the integer and uh, to create the column just write id equal to db.column and inside it just pass the data type which you want to have there okay and as it is a primary key so mention that primary key there equal to true okay now other column which will require here is title title is simply means uh the task the work which you want to add into your to web application so i'm just giving the name it as a title okay you can give it as a task or any, any other name um, title look pretty cool here okay now this will be a string kind of data type and here i pass the total length for my this data type so other and the last column which will there inside that to do table is complete now this is a kind of to-do web application you will mention the task and if it is completed then it will be true if it is not completed then it, the value will be false so two values will be there in this kind of column so i have used here the boolean and if you want to add some more columns into it you need to mention here i'm just going to give this three columns here and uh, this is how you your uh, model look like for your database now we have our a structure the uh, structure of our database and a table having the columns okay now thing which we need to configure here now is the front page for your to do app, app application so once you will going to create the to do app application the front page how the front page look like it will going to 
list all your tasks with the id and also showing the status of your task it is done or not so it's simply i'm going to create the two pages one page will just going to give the complete list of your task or projects and other one the page will going to give you option to add the to do task into it okay so i will going to create the two pages and it will going to uh, use the query all command this query all command is simple means to uh, search a strict from your table name okay so it will going to query all the columns all the rows from that table and it will going to print it on that web page okay so here i will going to create the two um, html pages here and you know that in flask web application if you want to add some kind of html pages then we will use this render template which uses the jinja template engine to render the html pages okay so inside that directory the template directory we will going to add the two web page one web page will be page.html and other web page um, i'm going to give it the name the list.html so and there i'm specifying the two urls for our to do web application one is slash edit and other one is simply slash and the slash which is the default one which when you're going to run this application the which page will going to open the first site inside that that only the list of your to do list will be there and hyphen and, and slash edit will going to give the option to add the to do items and delete them or make it complete or not complete okay so both of the pages will going to display all of the rows of the table so i'm going to mention this query dot all statement on both of the function one is home one and other one is list one now this is all about the sql let me structure where i define the instances of db and configure the sql alchemy and set up the table and also added the columns into it so might be it will look complicated but i hope now you must understand that how the things will look like when you're creating that database related web application hey friend welcome back here in this lesson we're going to add the crud operations into our web application this code simply means create retrieve update and delete in the previous lesson we have already added the function for retrieving the values from the to do app now let's add other functions as well first and foremost we will create the function for add inside it we will need to mention the method the http method which is post here this post method is used to send the data to a server either you are creating the any kind of data or updating your data and which is already there inside your db then we'll create the title object and the value of the title object will come from the html form where there will be one text field with the title id to get the whatever task you, you want to add into your table so once you have the value we will going to add into the title so for it you I, i'm going to create another object as well with the name new to do and uh, you know that our table consists of three columns one is id title and other last one is complete so we have the title which we which is inside the title object as well and uh, we will mark the complete with a uh, false there which stores only the binary value so i'm going to give it the default value as a false because the task whatever you're going to add it must be incomplete okay so now once you have the the records which you want to add into your table we're going to add that sessions into our to do and uh, at last you know we need to commit 
the all kind of changes which we made there and uh, and we will going to redirect to the home one function okay so this is our first function which i have created for adding the task into our table now i'm going to create the other function as well like one is update and other one is delete so first of all i'm going to create the function for update and in the update function what will going to happen that if you add any kind of task into your to do app the status will be the incomplete so once your task is completed now you want to change its current status to from incomplete to complete so for it there is the requirement for your to do id through which we will going to search the record of that title and when and then change the value of the complete field okay so now here i have already copied from the add function but i don't think so that the things which i have added there will require here in this update function so just remove there and just write to do dot query filter by and inside it you need to pass the whatever to do id where you need to update the complete value complete field value don't be confused with the name like to do title and the complete because these are little bit confusing terms here so make sure that don't become confused whenever talking about this kind of columns here now just change the value of this complete field which is the name of of the field okay now here you need to commit because you are doing some kind of changes there so we'll require for this commit there and again we're going to redirect to home one so this is the function of update now i'm going to create the function for delete and just change the app route url to delete and also the name of your function there and uh, here you need to delete your value from there so instead of adding this db or session add just write here db or session delete okay and the and the we need to here pass the to do here the title the object which will which will be filtered by the to do id so our delete function is also created as well so let me reformat the file so this is the all about that how you can create the web applications in adding the database into it so first we added the libraries then initiated the instance then did some kind of configurations for sql alchemy then added the db model and then added some of the functions which are to do the crud operations create retrieve update and delete so i hope you understand that how you can add this database functions into your web applications this this is only about the to do task you can add all of these features while creating the login or register form or any other kind of task where you require the sql alchemy the syntax will remain same Hey friend, welcome back. Here in this lesson, we're going to talk about the web application. And web application, you know it, it has on the web pages will there. And there is two web pages will there. One is list or HTML and other one is based or HTML. Inside the list or HTML, it will just going to list all of your to-do tasks there. And here you can find that I have used some the required tags. And here I'm also using the bootstrap link, the JS deliver, which is kind of free, fast, and reliable CDN and uh, here i'm just going to list all of the tasks which are there inside the table and for it uh, i have added the this division for ui segment where you will give in to get all your tasks there so this list or html will going to just open with us without adding any other url there just simply 
local host and your port number it will just going to work there as the application is not working you found that there is some kind of code words which is playing on the web page it will going to work when i'm going to start the flask server so whatever thing which you find here list or under this do html that the listing of all the tasks i'm going to keep them also in this based or html as well okay so these are the things which will remain same i've added some more functionalities into it one is update and delete button update to update your task and delete to delete your task and here is one uh, text field will be there to add your task under this to do title you will find that text field there and here you can simply just write your task there and tap the add button so what happened right now that our flask server is not working actually not running not working it's the wrong thing it's not running that's why we got that error so let me run this application and check it out that how our flask application is working fine or not so you will encounter this internal server error i think something is missing out okay this based or html file is looking correct I think there's no nothing is missing around there. Let me first of all just terminate this process and uh, check this app.py the main function file. And yep, I got the error. I didn't created the db here, so simply just write db dot create all. And also I'm going to add the debug mode to true. Okay, so now let me check that any kind of error is there or not so now it is working fine yep and this is the list or html where we will have the list of all your all tasks and uh, edit is the another url from where you can edit the changes into your task okay so this is the to do title let me in enter some kind of task into it try task one or any other task whatever you have so here you will get this update option from which you can change the status of your task and through delete option i have deleted the task as well so now one more thing i have missed out let me check it this page is working fine or not and for it i need to add the task again so let me check it out that our home page is working fine or not and it is working it is showing the task which we have added right now so what happened that whatever value which we have given inside their your text field it just go to that object that to do object and then it added into our to do table so hope you understand that how it work and the data is still persisted I mean your data is not lost when I close that application the data will remain there so this is the demo version of using our flask application Hey friend, welcome back. In this lesson, you will learn about AWS Code Commit. It is just like a GitHub, a kind of version control system, which is hosted and managed by Amazon Web Services, where you can store and manage your application source code. So let's create our first repository here. Here you can give any name for your repository and whatever you are going to give the name of your repository, 
it will be there in the repository link as well here you can also add some descriptions you can also add some tags there to easily locate this repository and also you can enable this amazon code guru reviewer which is very very pretty cool service through which you can review your source code and also it will going to suggest that where you can do some changes to make your code more good okay so here i have login with as a root account so that's why we can't do this ssh here and that's why this message is there okay we have two options available one is https and other one is this grc one which is where you need to install some packages of python and you can easily do this thing okay so we have our repository so let's create uh, some new file here and uh, there is an option like add file and here you can either upload your code or you can simply create a file let me create a file by using this console and this is the console where you can create a new file and let's create a simple python file which will going to print this hello world okay a very popular example and here you need to give the name of your file name which is hello.py and then you need to put the author name where i'm going to give the name of my aws console and email address as well and at last there will there will be option which is optional actually to add some commit messages there okay so now we have successfully committed and also created a new file which is now inside our newly created repository so there you can put some notification rules like whenever you're going to do some kind of changes it will going to notify you then there is some options for branches and there's an option for cloning your repository so there are a lot of things which you can do here and it is just like github as as i said earlier so you can do all of the operations all of the functionalities which you can do with git and github so now what I'm going to do here as you can see in the commit section there is only one commit is there as we did only one time that's why we have only one commit details. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to create a new file not going to create new file actually I'm going to update this existing file and see that how that commit ID will going to be changed okay and then we're going to visualize this commit okay so this is our file and here i'm going to modify something and then going to do the commit for the second time okay and as i said that it is a version control system so it will going to maintain all the versions of your changes of the files okay and meanwhile one more thing which i want to add here is like git is very very useful like working with too many members which are there in your team and as it is a collaboration tool so whatever they do some changes they will going to request some PR which is pull request here and as if you are uh, admin there then you can accept that PR okay this is the visualizer of the commit which we did even you can do some comparisons of commit as well once you have two or more branches okay we have only one branch branch right now we're going to create some more new branches in the next videos okay so this is the approval rule template like someone put some PR if you have set up already some approval rule then it will going to accept that PR in that way okay now this is our repository and this is our file now let us clone this repository to our local system okay so make sure you must have git installed in your system as well as the only git git is required and one more thing the aws cli as well okay and login with your user id if you have created a newly im role then you need to again do some credentials work there okay so i've already logged into my console and the command prompt so i don't require to log it again so i'm just simply going to create a new directory here and open a command prompt here and just going to write a simple git command which is git clone and the, that url so it will going to clone our that repository to our local system as you can see this is hello.py which we created uh, in console so this is all about code commit in next video we're going to learn more about it
for now keep learning keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create a repository and add some file using console now in this part i have already have one flask application a web application where i'm going to add into my existing repository actually i'm going to create a new branch which is the our master branch and i'm going to push all of this code up there to that particular branch so first of all what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this all content and in my previous video i've shown you that how you can simply clone your repository to your local system so what i did here as it is a git base thing so it maintains the versions okay so the dot git folder contains the version which have only hello.py now i've added these three things there so what will it going to do it will going to show that these files are untracked now you to make this file to track one you need to use this git add command and once you have did this git add command it will become the tracked one so here what i'm going to do is this is our main branch either you can create a new branch using console what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new master branch using this command prompt okay so to create a new master branch you need to use the branch here and here get checkout command which is through which you can create a branch if that particular master branch is there then you can use this checkout to move that branch but if it doesn't so it will going to create a new branch and then it will going to switch to that particular branch so now we have created the master branch and currently we are inside our master branch you can see and now i'm going to make this untracked file into the tracked file using add command now at last i'm going to do commit and here the changes the code it will going to be added into our master branch not our main branch okay so this is the our comment message and let let us push this code up there okay we have already set up this git remote one thing because we have cloned that thing so it already configure all the basic setups before pushing your file into your repository now simply use this git push origin master and it will going to push all of your stuffs up there now let me refresh and uh, as you can see this is our main branch and our new branch is also created which is master branch and inside master branch we have hello.py okay that particular file will be there because we have not deleted that particular file we had just added some new files into that so here we have that three files which we added and hello.py which is already there okay so this is how you can simply create a new branch and then switch different branches okay i hope you have understand that how you can clone your repository and how you can push your content into the repository okay so that's all keep learning and keep exploring hello friend welcome back in this course you will learn about code build a build service offered and managed by amazon web services it is a kind of build service where you will be able to compile your code source code you can all run your unit and functional test and create the artifacts and also provide software package that is ready to, to deploy if you're already familiar with maven and cmake even gradle then for sure this code build will be easier for you basically it is a fully managed aws ci services through which you don't need to provision manage and scale your servers and also it also provides pre-packed build environment that you can use to build your application so let's get started while creating aws code build project and here you will get some options like you need to put the project name here you can provide any name for your project then you need to provide the descriptions it is not mandatory but you can add some description here you can enable this build badge 
then there is also you can put limit for your build then you can have the options for tax and the most important you need to select the source here you will get s3 code commit github bitbucket and github enterprise once you have selected any of the source you need to select the repository then you need to select the branch here we have two branches i'm going to go for our first branch which is main branch and afterwards we are going to check for our master branch but be but before we're going to test for our main branch where we have only one single file hello.py which contains this print hello world so i just want to show you that how you can do a simple build okay so now we have our branch we have our repository you can set some environments like if you choose the managed image you need to choose the operating system the runtime then the image but you can also choose the darker image as well okay well at last you need to select the service role for the permission of this code build either you can create the service new service role or you can choose the existing service role if it is created earlier then you have some more additional configurations like you can put timeout you can use certificate the vpc virtual private network then you can add some environment variables like once your system will be started the amazon linux or something else it will going to um, create the environment variables and so on things you can do a lot of things these are some prerequisites which you can do for your build system okay now here you will get an uh, option for build spec this is the one of the important part for this code build it stores all the build commands here okay so here i'm going to use this build commands and this is the format what are the things which you can put down into this build command the build spec file it is in the form of yaml what will going to happen once your build system is ready once it is provisioned then it will look for this build spec dot yaml and then follows all the build commands up there like it will going to upgrade your python packages installing some of the packages and so on things it's a build command which you do generally with your command prompt or your shell so just like shell we're going to define some of the things like first of all you need to mention the version then you need to mention the different phases so our first phase will be to install all the required thing like you need to set your runtime version like here i'm going to choose the python here and you need to choose the python version you want to install into your build system okay then you can have some build commands after it then some post build phases so there is different kinds of phases which you can add into your this build spec yaml file okay here i'm going to use this 3.8 version okay now in the pre-build commands i'm going to upgrade the pip okay and also wait minute upgrade okay this is the way you can update the pip okay the latest version which is required here now we can um simply run the main file because we are added the source so it will going to clone that particular source to our build system and then we're going to run that file before it i'm going to just list that what are the things are there on my build system root okay and later on we're going to run the file so here you can also do some bash configurations as if it is not required right now you can also add some artifacts from here which we are going to do afterwards or you can select the amazon s3 okay then in the section of flocks there is two options of label one is cloudwatch and other one is s3 so i'm going to opt for this s3 logs and you need to mention the name of your s3 bucket where this all the logs will be going to store there let me show you this is where it's s3 this storage s3 and here i have already created one bucket name with sample 00 sam okay and here i have stored some of the files out there and some logs which i created earlier 
okay so these are some of the things let me delete all the logs which are creating some kind of confusions let me delete this logs which is because it's not required right now and uh, we're going to add all the logs here okay as we have defined this s3 bucket so this is how you can choose this logs option now i have started my build project so it will take quite time but uh, i'm going to fast up the process because the it will approximately take to 10 to 15 minutes okay so i have passed in the process so the as you can see the phases are changed from queue to submitted to the provision and at last we have the completed process so these are some of the phase details which you can see here and this is environment variables we don't have any kind of environment variables so it was null and these are some of the things which of build details which we configure while initializing this project you can also do some of the monitoring thing here as we have not run our application for more than one hour so that's why the data was not sufficient that's why we don't have any kind of utilization matrix here okay so leave it we can also view this all matrix in cloud bars as well but it is not required right now now this is how you can see the environments vpc or the default ones there and in the logs we have added that sample 07 this is our build spec okay now let me this is report which is empty and this is all the phase details this is the logs which is created while running up that process the build process so you can see all of the things there so this is my sample 007 s3 bucket for sure our log will be generated here as you can see this is a uh, our log which is generated right now it is in the zip format so i'm going to store this and let me open this log okay and you will find that it has some timestamps is there and is also showing that container and all the process all the things which happened like it, you can see the pip installed and ls have we listed our files there hello.py which simply means that we successfully um, created our build project and the next part we're going to deal with our master branch okay so that's all keep learning and keep hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create the cold build project easily and quickly now in this part i'm going to show you that how you can do unit test as well as i'm going to change the branch previously i've used the main branch this time i'm going to use the master branch this master branch contains our main application source code and this is the test.py and here i'm using the pytest which is used for doing unit test okay so i have created the three different test cases two of them is to check the response code of two different urls of our application and the last one is to trigger some of the tags which are present in my web page okay so these are different test cases test one test two test three and this is my application now all of the process which i did in my local system i'm going to do in my build system okay so this is my test.py i have already uploaded this test.py into my repository now the time is to change the source into my build project okay this comes into the master branch so you need to change the main branch to the master branch here you will get an option edit then source here you will get some options like source provider which is code commit here i'm not going to change this i'm just change the branch here okay you can also add some commit id as well if you are want to trigger spec uh, particular commit okay so this is our setup and now let's do the start build so it will again going to take a time okay so because it will going to provision all of the things this is our build spec file 
here I didn't commit any changes right now but we're going to do some changes later on the main objective here to of this build to check that our master branch is enabled able to clone there into my build process or not okay we're going to change this build spec yaml file later on so our process is started now this is the build number two you can see here and uh, and in the phase details you will find that the phase submitted is completed within one second now it is in the queued phase okay and once it will complete this queued phase it will going to provision phase as i have posted the process because it will take again a time lot of time so that's why i have passed in this video okay now it will going to provision all of the stuffs which it did earlier and uh, for a while and here it downloads the sources and star previews and so on things happen as you can see that our this master branch is successfully cloned into my build system this simply means that we successfully make the changes now let's do unit test so we need to change the build spec file okay go to the main page of your code build and here you will get an option which is edit and in the edit you will get build spec okay you need to go there and here you can edit and add some of the build commands there okay. so till now we have just upgraded the pip library now we need to install some of the packages to run our application like pytest the sql alchemy the flask okay so it will going to install all of the required packages and then it will going to do the unit test to do unit test you need to use the command pytest okay so let me change it here let's write pytest python am uh, slash, dash am space pytest and the name of your file where you have stored all your test cases there okay so this is sufficient we're going to do some changes later on and uh, this is our newly created build spec now let's rerun the build process okay so it will again take a time so i'm going to fast the process again so all the process happened there now it is doing the post build part and it's also complete completed now this is log you can see here it update the pip library then install all the required packages up there then you can see at the bottom you can see that it passed all the three test cases which we have added okay so this simply means that our application is working fine and now you can deploy this application using code deploy or code pipeline or with code star okay that's all in the next lesson we're going to learn more about code build for now keep learning and keep exploring hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson, I have shown you that how you can create some logs and do some unit testing. And logs which I have created is a part of artifacts which contains some timestamps and the process which happened behind the scenes. Now I'm going to create the report and as well as I'm going to add the environment variables as well. So don't merge these two topics, reports and the artifacts. These two things are totally different from each other. Okay. So as you can see, I have already uncommitted the report section. We have pytest report here and it will be stored into report.xml. Okay. And it will show that the, the test case which we have added and how much test cases passed and how much test cases failed. This will going to show that thing. Okay. And uh, let me define some environment variables here. You need to put before the phrases part and here you need to give the key 
and values of your environment variable so the key will be my s3 bucket name and the value will be the value of this s3 bucket which is sample 007 okay let me copy this and uh, i'm going to add there okay well now to check that our environment variable is working fine or not so i'm going to use the echo command here and this echo will going to print the value of my environment variable which is s3 bucket here okay so this is our new build spec yaml file where we have added two things one is the environment variable and other one is the report okay so we have almost completed all the parts of build spec right now only artifact is there which you can create through some options available on console as well you don't require to mention it into your build spec file okay so there's two options either you can create the artifacts using console or you can simply create it with using your build spec yaml file okay so our all the phrases has been completed now let me open this log you can see here this is whole process which happened behind the scenes and uh, you can see it generated the report as well okay now in a in tab report you can see it generated a report let me open this report now you can see it has a summary of our pass rate okay so this pass rate depicts the test cases which we have added and there were only three tests there and uh, that all the cases were passed okay now in the environment variable tab we didn't get the environment variable this is because we don't add it in the very very initial step okay so that's why it is not displaying here but let me show you the log and let let us check that the environment variable which we have created which we have initialized into my build spec file it is working fine or not so this is our this is our log file into my s3 bucket let me download it and uh, i just download it and uh, let me open this log file and choose this notepad option now you can see that uh, yes s3 bucket is sample 007 this simply shows that our environment variable is initialized when the build process started so it doesn't matter that it should also display into the environment variable section for it you need to in initialize at the very very in initial step okay so it's not important to be reflected there so the the purpose was to show that environment variable is working fine or not and it is working so that's how you can easily add environment variables and generate the reports so these are some of the builds which I have done till now okay and uh, you can have some batch history which is no nothing is there because we didn't create any batch process okay and this is our configurations for our build project and uh, at last we'll get some other options and that very last we will have the build spec okay so this is artifacts where we stored our logs okay now at last i'm going to show you one more thing which is the batch url if you're already familiar with github where we do some commit you can also add the batches there okay once you are doing some the github action things it will generate the batch that the build is successfully happened so here you can also generate the build batch okay let me show you how it looks like okay before it let me show you one more thing in the notify you can also set some of the rules here like if you created any build process and some event occur like success error fail something then it will going to generate the 
mails using the SNS or SES. Okay, so this is my AWS Cold Break batch, which is showing that it is passing all of the things. So that's all how you can do lots of things with Cold Build. Uh, AWS Managed Services for CI. Hope you enjoyed. Keep learning and keep exploring. Hello friends, welcome back. In this lesson you will learn about Code Pipeline, a kind of continuous delivery service which is fully managed by AWS. You must be familiar with Pipeline if you come from the DevOps background. If not, let me explain it once again. That what is Pipeline basically? Actually, it is a process of taking the code from version control and then make it a production ready, which is later on we're going to deploy. It automates the process, the steps which comes under this pipeline, like version control, build, containerization, monitoring, and so on. So this is a pipeline which automates and model your different steps from the source to the deployment it is a pipeline it is a code pipeline basically here so here in this lesson you will learn how you can create a simple code pipeline so let's do it so you need to select the pipeline settings from here so first of all you need to give the name for your pipeline I'm just going to put sample dash pipeline then you need to create the service role if you don't have a service role, you need to create using IAM roles. Okay. Now these are some of the things like artifact encryptions. I'm going to give a default one. Okay. So now the, the next step is to add the source. Okay. This is a source stage, and here you will get some options like code commit, ECR, S3, Bitbucket, and different versions of GitHub. Here I'm going to select this AWS code commit. And this is my repository and in that repository there are basically two branches are there let me show you once again so this is the repository so that was for ECR let me open this code commit one okay now this is my repository under this code commit and here I have two branches one is main branch and other one is master branch in the master branch we have actually the full source code of our application so here I'm going to select this master branch and then then you need to choose the detection option like one is recommended which is Amazon CloudWatch event or other one is AWS core pipeline which we are going to check periodically for changes okay and the artifact I'm going to give it a default one now this comes a build stage and here I'm going to use this code build or you can use a Jenkins in case. Now here you need to select the region then you need to select the project name which I have already created. Let me show you once again. Open this code build in new tab and here you will get uh, two projects. One is code build test which I have shown you how you can create this code build. Now here I have performed some of the builds which I have already shown you and it's generally going to do some unit testing and even going to create reports and artifacts as well. Now here you need to select the build type single build or other one. So I'm going to give it a default one. Now comes the deploy stage and here you will get lots of options like app config, cloud formation, code deploy, elastic beanstalk ops work and so on things even alexa is also here then ecs s3 blah 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 so we have different options available different services are available of aws to deploy something okay so here i'm choose this uh, aws elastic being stuck so let me show you okay this is our home page for amazon elastic being stuck which is used to create a web application okay we don't have any web application right now so for general I'm going to create a sample application uh, here I'm going to choose the language the platform and the versions and uh, which is also and you can also 
recommend you uh, this although you can upload your code or you can use the sample application here so what I want to do is to upload my own source code here okay now here comes two options one is from uh, either local file or from the public SCURL. So my source code is not available right now into a bucket. It is basically in my local machine. So I'm going to upload all of the codes and uh, put it there. Okay. Make sure that the code which you are going to upload must be in the zip format. Okay. So once you have uploaded the things, it will going to start the process. It will going to create the environment. Then the choose environment which is Python here, and then it will going to run your application it is very easy to create the web application using this elastic bean star because it already have some pre-built environment for particular languages okay so it makes your task much easier through which you can quickly deploy the web application okay here you will get some sample url as well which you can do add some custom URL in place of that particular URL okay this is a log where you can see all the process which are running right now it will take a time for a while but once it will complete it we can easily see that our application will be deployed okay so you can see that it uses the easy to simply means last day compute okay we our application is ready you can see this is my application the checklist app and here you can do many things like you can add tasks here okay so lots of things you can do from there now I have created the application so I need to refresh it again and now this pipeline dash evs comes here and the environment which we created right now so this is uh, different stages which I have added you can add even more, some more like adding the containers adding the monitoring services as well and lots of other things so let me rebuild this environment or I think we should leave this part this elastic being stuck here you will get lots of option there okay in this action tab like load configurations save configurations then you can even swap your environment then build rebuild and terminate your environment okay so this is a window for last year being stock okay so let me open that pipeline one thing where it is here so our pipeline is created and the source part is also completed now it is in the build form so it will take for a time for a while we'll see in the next lesson Hey friend, welcome back. In my previous lesson, I have shown you that how you can create simple code pipeline. Here we got some error in this deploy stage. Let us check it out that why we got that error. So this is the reason behind that error that there is some issue on our Amazon S3 bucket. So let us fix this problem. For it, you need to open the S3 dashboard where we can have this bucket name let me copy this and uh, open this s3 open a new tab and so let us use this search tab so that we can easily find out our bucket okay so we have that bucket let us go inside this bucket and here some of the files and folders are already there so I think that the files which are there inside this s3 bucket that's why the problem is occurring so first of all I'm going to delete all of the objects which are there in this bucket okay so I have deleted for permanent and now we don't have any kind of objects present in this bucket okay now I don't think so that we need to delete this bucket because it is required here so that the sample application which we are uploading through the beanstalk will going to store here okay so I don't think so that we need to delete that thing 
now come now go to this edit section and here I'm going to remove this build stage because I've already show you that how you can do unit testing and create the artifacts and there is limit while using this build okay so that's why I have removed that particular thing now this is my deploy and this is the things you can see here input artifacts you need to select the source artifacts there now I'm going to rerun this pipeline where there will be two things will be there one is source and other one is your deploy okay so started the process and our first step is also completed again we got some error okay but I didn't think that error has any role here okay I'm going to, to run this pipeline again and uh, it will take time our first stage is completed which simply means that we have successfully copy that source thing into this and uh, our deployment is also in progress so let us check it out that what will going to happen next that again we got some error or not and we successfully deployed okay because we got this succeeded masses up there so this is how you can create the sample pipeline first of all we we need to take the code using this source stage and then we're going to build where you're doing some unit testings creating some artifacts there and then you need to deploy that whatever you have the source okay now here let me open that particular bucket and let us check that what are the things goes inside that particular bucket and uh, there is nothing let me refresh this page again oh we have something so this is some file which is stored inside that particular bucket okay we don't have access right there so i'm going to simply download it okay and then check the content of this object so as you can see that the content which is inside this object is our source code of the application okay so this is a sample how you can simply implement this aws code pipeline one of the developer tools i hope you have understand about this aws code pipeline service you can also add some more things inside this pipeline okay so that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friend welcome back in this lesson you will learn how to quickly develop build and deploy your application on aws using aws code star as you can see once you are going to come this initial page of the project template you will got some templates like javascript node.js php python and asp.net as well okay so here i'm going to opt this python with flask and which will going to use the aws beanstalk okay so here, now you need to give the name for your project here and this core star is very very awesome tool because you will get access to all of your services in one place and the best thing is it will going to help you to create the continuous delivery tool chain in just a single click and that's the beauty now you need to select the repository here and here you need to select some of the ec2 configuration settings like what kind of instance have you want to use the vpc the subnets and so on things okay so here you need to give a name less than 15 characters so this is a review page where you can see the project template, the project details, repository, as well as the EC2 configurations. So let's create the project, the code star project. Okay. So here, as you can see on my screen, you are getting some options like IDE, repository, pipeline, monitoring, and issues. So here, you will get bunches of the services of AWS here. You can access each of them from here. 
So that's why I love this tool, this course star, because it will saves a lot of your time. Okay. And the best part is it is all integrated tightly. So you don't need to be worried that how you're going to integrate this AWS services with that AWS services. Okay. As you can see on the left side as well, you'll get some options like project, team and settings. In the team section, you can add your team members here so that they can also manage all this AWS services here. Okay. As an admin, you can decide whatever rights you want to give that particular team member with the help of IAM rules and different policies you can give that particular team member. Okay, you can see it is taking a time to provision as lots of services will going to be deployed. Okay, so now our we got some options for IDE like AWS Cloud9, any IDE like Eclipse or PyCharm like things. They are not enabled. So the very first thing here you need to set up your AWS Cloud9. Okay, you can also use your favorite ID but here I'm going to use this AWS Cloud9 to access the project the project source code okay so you need to tap there set up AWS Cloud9 and you need to create the environment for your Cloud9 I'm going to give all the settings to default one and here you need to give the name of your environment so I'm going to copy I've, I've already copied the name of our Core Star project at last. I'm just going to add this ENV. Okay, so it will going to create the environment for the Cloud9. Okay, now this is the Cloud Formation console where you can access the whole stack details. That what are the services are created and what are the services are in the creation mode and what are the service is not started yet. Okay, you will get lots of options here in this event section of the cloud formation stack. Okay, so here you will got some timestamps, then status, the status reasons, and the logical ID as well. So there are a lot of services to be started. So it will going to take a lot of time. So I'm going to take a time so that all the things has been set up and we're going to discuss in our next lesson. So for now, keep learning and keep exploring. Hey friend, welcome back. In my previous lesson, I have shown you that how you can create the AWS Code Star project. As discussed, that a lot of the developers tool services will be there into this Code Star project. Here you will have Cloud9, your Code Commit, Code Build, Code Pipeline as well. We're going to have lots of things. Now, as you can see, that it also created the S3 bucket and the name you can see it is aws dash code star which will going to store the artifacts the source and lots of other things here okay now other than it i'm going to also show you about code commit where you will get the repository because it will also going to create the repository as well let me show you so as you can see the newly created repository is there and uh, this is the source code of the application that it will going to deploy. Here it has build spec.yaml, a template.yaml, and so on. So build spec yaml I have already discussed. It is used for code build, which contains some sequences of build commands, which it will going to run either to do some unit test or various other things. Here you can see inside this code build. It also has a project there okay so these are the three things which I have seen right now one is code commit the code build the s3 and some of the resources are still in the progress mode okay let me open for this Amazon Elastic Beanstalk which is going to deploy the application the sample application by code star and I can see that the process it's not started yet because we don't have any environment in that Elastic Big Star. It is in the create in progress. Not it is it is not actually completed right now. Okay, and you can see here in the event section inside this cloud formation, we can see that lots of things there. Now this is S3. 
bucket is there and uh, let me open this one of the bucket and you can see some of the files is there these are some of the logs file is there okay which it generated okay some of the folders some of the buckets are empty as well okay well this is the let's have a look inside our application source code okay opening to code commit is not looking great but still i'm going to look for this is the application.py the main application file which will which is the engine for this application so here you can see that a sample flask app is there okay and uh, let me open some of the other things as well it is still pro in the provisioning mode you can see once it will complete it the whole way then you will find some more things okay now for now i'm going to look for this cloud 9 environment which i have created earlier or uh, it is deleted now let me see i don't find any okay let me create the cloud 9 environment again so you need to give the name for your environment here i think i've already created let me show inside this cloud 9 one and here you can see it is already there okay let me open this id and uh, this is opening some of those events are still in the running mode and some are completed as well not only one stack is there it also created multiple stacks there you can see yes bunches of resources and events are there and some of are still in the progress mode i don't know how much time we're going to take but still we're going to wait for it and uh, let me check for this cloud 9 so we have our application here welcome to you this basically this aws cloud 9 is cloud based id where you can write your codes even preview your application as well so now it is ready now we can explore each of the files which are there in this application source code application.py i have already discussed now these are some test cases are there okay a simple test cases is there to check the content of the page okay so then we have requirement.txt there only is one library required which is flux dot plus basically then this is a setup file and this is the template either you this is the template for cloud formation okay so these are the things is happening inside that cloud formation stack which i have shown you earlier so here the transform is aws code star now this is init.py which is empty right now and it is empty as well now you can see here that it will going to open your application on 0.0.0, .0, .0 host and basically not going to have such function it's basic app which is made of flask and we're going to use this json format and uh, let us check that how this application will look like there's only simple get function and get and post function is there i don't think that it will have a such thing or such a full-fledged code it is just a simple app still it is taking too much time isn't it now let me refresh this and go to this environment app okay we have now elastic beanstalk environment now it is ready now from here we could ac actually access the our application and as you can see that 
this is the output of that particular application okay so this is uh, some recent events which are occurred during initializing this elastic beanstalk environment well we're going to discuss other things as well in the later part for now keep hey friends welcome back in my previous lesson i have shown you that overview the complete picture of all the developer tool services of aws now this time we're going to see some more things about the code star so here you will have some overview then there is id and now you can see the cloud formation stack is now completed and some of those resources are still in progress mode but they are not required right now they are not too much important okay so don't worry about that particular status it doesn't affect your application okay so there are a lot of services and is still in a progress mode now leave that part okay now from here either if you want to delete the stack you can delete from there okay so there are basically we have four stacks right now which is generated one is for elastic beanstalk one is for code star and one is for infrastructure and one is for complete code star stack okay we have different cloud formation stack is also there now inside this repository i have already talked about and then this is the code now let me show you again the output of this application which is hello world here so now we have you can either create some pull request from here if you want to do some changes inside this repository then we have pipeline here you can see that there is source stage then there is build stage then there is deploy stage and you can see one there is two basically things inside this deploy stage okay now we have a monitoring tab as well where you can see the amazon ec2 matrix the cpu utilization the networkings and various other things from here actually we didn't run this application for long so you can't find any significant information through this matrix okay if you're going to change the parameter to one hour you can see a dot is there on every graph and it doesn't giving uh any information from that so i'm going to leave it and here you will find one a wonderful thing is there that zero for external issue tracking you can add this jira and your team member can access it and they can easily manage the issues or any other things through jira or even can plan something about any update any change for the application so this is about the code star project now other option which i'm going to show you which is team here okay this is cloud9 environment as well i have already talked all about so we have discussed various things right now so these are some of the resources which is created and this is some readme files there how you can run this particular application in your local machine okay I'm not going to do that because it will again will going to take a lot of time you can do some experiments with it but it is it is not required right now now we have this team section inside this team section you can add some team members here so that they can also manage this code star project okay so i'm going to show you how you can create it actually i have only two users two i am roses there so i'm just going to give this i am aws user or you can even create a new user from here then you can give any display name then give any email addresses and also you can give any role to that particular member okay you can also give the power to have access using ssh as well so in this way i have added the team member into my project you can see 
so this is the way you can do lots of things in the into this code star project this is actually a bunch of services which is there now from here you can go to any resources which are related to this project okay code build and then code deploy then code pipeline various various other things are there that's all about this code star project hope you understand how it works so keep learning keep exploring